just as it was about to come out of her body, she'd go <gasps> and come back in again. We are planetary guardians, custodians of this sacred planet that we call Earth. The ego has no power in the present moment. It can only operate in the future and in the past. Every now and again, it felt like I was about to suffocate. Eventually, my breath stopped and slowed down. It was like a controlled death experience, but it was beautiful. So people always ask, how do you meditate? How do you get out of your body? How do you silence your mind? How do you go beyond your body? The thing is this, when you go into meditation and you want to leave your body or you want to expand your consciousness or you want to still your mind, there's a part of your consciousness, that little voice inside your head that always wants to chatter. It gets scared. Whenever you go into silence, the voice in your head always wants to speak up or your bodily functions want to get involved. You could be dropping into a deep meditation and you feel like you want to scratch your nose or you want to scratch your chest or you want to sneeze or you want to cough. You could be drinking plant medicine and you're slowly crossing over, going deeper and then you feel like you want to purge, or you feel like you want to move your body. What's happening is you're getting restless internally, and there's a part of you that's getting restless. Some people call it the ego. Whenever you start to move into that present state of awareness, there's a part of you that starts to panic because the ego has no power in the, in the present moments. It can only operate in the future and in the past. I remember a few years ago, my nan, she was 97 years old and she was doing really well and she ended up falling over and breaking her hip and she went into hospital and when she had an operation, she caught pneumonia and then she got into a really bad space and I remember being in the hospital with her and she was crossing over she actually crossed right on her 98th birthday. But the lead up to the crossing over, I could see her soul coming out of her body. And just as it was about to come out of her body, she'd go <gasps> and come back in again. Like there was a part of her that was fighting to keep her in because she was about to cross over. She was about to enter that place of stillness and presence and leave her body. And that part of the, the mind, the ego, would have had no power. So it reaches out. And she took this deep breath and she held on again. And this happened over and over for 30, 40 minutes. And then, boom, she left her body and had a beautiful transition. And I supported the process for her. Right now, we're on a 10-day plant medicine retreat. And I remember two nights ago, I was lying there been drinking the medicine and I was going into a really deep space and I was just observing my mind. My mind wanted to blow my nose. My mind wanted to, to fidget. My mind wanted to scratch. My body wanted to move. I wanted to cough. I wanted to get on my knees and be sick. But all of these things were just a distraction. It was my body reaching out for mercy. It was panicking and it didn't want to allow me to go into that present state of awareness. And I was just observing this happening. And I was told, stop breathing, Jerry. So I just became ever so present. And I watched myself and felt myself slowly stopping my breath. And then every now and again, it felt like I was about to suffocate. And I'd go, <gasps> and I'd breathe. And I'd go through this process. And eventually my breath stopped and slowed down. And I crossed over to the other side. It was like a controlled death experience, but it was beautiful. But once I trusted the process, I just moved out from my body. Whenever I've gone out of my body before, I've done it in a different way. I've always breathed really long and slow and slowed my heart rate right down. And then as my heart rate was boom, boom, like real slow, I just stepped out of my heart and moved out of my body. This was a whole different experience, just choosing not to breathe and trust in the process that you're not gonna die. And you actually realize that 
You don't need to breathe. You can just stop breathing and leave your body and then decide to come back in your body when you want. It's a beautiful experience. Something else that's really interesting. People always say, I can't get out of my head. I'm always thinking, I can't get out of my head. Now, if you think about this dimensional space that we're in or this large construct full of multiple multidimensional spaces, multiple dimensions stacked up on top of each other, you move through these dimensional spaces at 90 degree angles. But when you move through these 90 degree angles into these different dimensional spaces, which are all layered and stacked up on top of each other, you don't actually really go anywhere. You just move through different vibrational spaces, different frequency bands. When you move at 90 degree angles, you only ever stay inside the construct. If you look at the fall of consciousness over billions and billions of years, when the frequency dropped and the density dropped, and we ended up on this planet called Earth, which is a whole big, gigantic galactic story with so many twists and turns, so many elements, so many different fractals. But Earth used to be a high frequency planet, which was made from crystalline light and it did drop its density. And Earth is actually a makeup of another planet, but that's a whole other story. But the density, the light encoded crystalline planet called Earth that vibrated much higher, dropped in its density. And we came down into this Earth plane and we were held inside a construct that we know as Metatron's cube. And it was a fail-safe mechanism to stop consciousness falling any further because it was spiraling out of control. There were too many fractals and the low vibrations and the high vibrations. There was too much chaos, too much duality. It was getting out of control. And the creator of the universe, God, infinite intelligence, source, whatever you want to call it, decided to create this construct. And it was a beautiful thing at the time because it held us in a space where we didn't fall anymore. But then we ended up getting stuck inside that cubed structure. But within the cubed structure, there is a way out. And that way out is the spiral. You can't exit a cube at right angles. You can only exit a cube by spiraling out of a cube. Because if you move out of a cube at right angles, you move into another cubed structure. But when you spiral out of the cube, you move into a whole different dimensional space and you exit the structure. Now, if you think about your head, people say, I'm stuck in my head. I can't get out of my head. How do I get out of my head, Jerry? Well, there's a very simple way. You spiral out of your head and you spiral out of your head at 45 degree rotations. The crystal spiral that moves out from the zero point that stays connected to the zero point spirals at a 45 degree rotation. Now, when you're going into meditation or you're trying to steal yourself down or leave your body or you want to just exit your consciousness and go traveling, if you close your eyes and you look up towards your forehead at a 45 degree angle and then you focus on that 45 degree angle at the top of your forehead and then you bounce your consciousness back at another 45 degree angle up towards the top of your head and from there at another 45 degree angle back to the back of your head and then, then from there back down again, you create the crystal spiral inside your head. And when you create the crystal spiral inside your head, there's no opportunity for thoughts. The thoughts just stop. Thoughts cannot hang around in a spiral. The thoughts hang around in the structure. And that 45 degree crystal spiral that you can create inside of your mind enables you to spiral your consciousness out from your head and just flow through the multidimensional playing fields and have a beautiful journey. You tap into the code, the frequency, the geometry, the mathematics of the universe, but the real mathematics, not the mathematics that makes up our human world, that makes up this construct that looks beautiful, so beautiful. Nature is amazing and it's quite hard to get your head around that nature could be off in its fractal, in its geometry, in its code. But that's the magic and the trickery blended into one in this dualistic framework. If you're gonna control a species, if you're gonna control the whole human race, and not just the human race, but 
other beings on other planets in our galaxy too. And beyond our galaxy, you have to create a very specific set of codes and a very specific framework, which makes everybody feel that they're free, which makes everybody think and decide that they're living in sovereignty and freedom. But really, they're in a prison. And a lot of people feel that when they exit their physical bodies, they can exit the prison. And actually, you can. But you have to be conscious of it and you have to understand the mathematics. When you look at this world and this earth plane, we know that we have to exit. We know that we have to leave this planet at some point. And if you look at certain families, if you look at certain groups of people around the planet, they're working to get off this planet. Those that really understand this matrix, that really understand the mathematical code that we're inside of, that we're playing the game of life in, that we're weaved and alchemized and a part of, they know that we must exit this planet. They know that we must exit this galaxy. They know that we must exit this time-based matrix and move out into the God worlds and find somewhere else to recite. Earth might not be here forever, so we need to find a way. One way is moving through the stargates, and that involves re-engineering and activating our own DNA template, our own original blueprint. And again, the key to that is the crystal spiral. The key to that is those 45 degree rotations. Four and five is nine. The three, six, and nine broken down creates that spiral. 45 is the key. 13 plays a big part in that. The 13 spheres in Metatron's cube, they connect to 12 points on your multidimensional Merkaba field. That 12-pointed star, those 10 tetrahedrons, five that rotate clockwise, five that rotate anti-clockwise. The 13th sphere in Metatron's cube plugs into your own heart. And your own heart has that God spark, that crystal spiral. It has that multidimensional Merkaba field right in its center. And that in itself is a stargate that you can move out into the universe through. So when you plug those 12 points on the multidimensional Merkaba field into the 12 spheres of Metatron's cube, and then you plug your own heart into the central point of Metatron's cube, and you spin those tetrahedrons, you create a beautiful sphere. And within that sphere, you create the spiral. And from there, you can spiral through your heart out into the universe. You can spiral out from your mind into the universe. You can use the stargate of your heart to move through different dimensional gateways and you can exit this planetary matrix. This is the real stuff. These are the mystery school teachings. In 2014, 2015, I spent nine months in deep meditation underneath the pyramids in classrooms with Thoth and loads of other human beings, like children sat in a classroom being shown ancient scrolls. On these scrolls were codes. They were the same codes that got downloaded into my crown when I took a trip in a spaceship in 2009 to Alpha Centauri and met my Lyran family. Those codes that I downloaded in 2009 and then got shown how to use in 2014, they were extraterrestrial codes being shown to me in the mystery schools in Egypt. Extraterrestrial codes from outer space or maybe from inner space, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. But these codes and these fractals are the sacred keys, the crystalline keys that enable us to travel, that enable us to decide where we want to go and where we don't want to go. We are planetary guardians. We are stargate warriors, custodians of this sacred planet that we call Earth. We have the power to take control of our own human experience. We're superhumans. We're high frequency, angelic humanoids. Our pineal glands should be four or five times bigger. Our arms, our hands, our brains, our skulls, our whole bodies should be much bigger. We're just running off a down-regulated gene code. And that's okay because it's been part of the game, but we're remembering and we are here on earth right now finding the clues that we left thousands and millions of years ago as galactic beings traveling through the universe 
dropping off those sacred codes and building those sacred structures here on planet Earth. And now we're here again, moving through time and space, through this reality field, finding the clues that we left for our future selves. And those future selves are our now selves, here in this reality field, right now. Here, on Earth understanding the sacred mathematics of the Giza pyramid, understanding the sacred mathematics of the stargates and the Cathara grids and the rotational spins, the electromagnetic, the magnetics and the electrics, the connection to the stars and the earth, our own celestial god and goddess nature that resides in every cell of our body, the god spark in our heart that connects us to infinite intelligence. We are plugged in and we're remembering how amazing we truly are. Practice closing your eyes, looking up at a 45 degree angle, bouncing your consciousness off the top of your skull into the back of your head and back at another 45 degree angle. You'll create that rotational spin inside your mind, your thoughts will disappear and you'll just spiral. Your consciousness will flow. You'll forget you've even got a skull, a brain, and you'll just float and drift through the universe. It's beautiful. Try slowing your breathing right down. Go into that space where you slow it down so much that you just decide to stop and have the courage to trust the process and allow yourself to pop out of your body. Step out of your body. Look back down at your body and realize that you and your body are two completely separate things. Your body is an avatar that you interface with other avatars through on this planet. In this human world, you get to interface in this multidimensional time matrix with other beings, with other energies, with other pieces of code, because that's what we are. Walking, talking, biological computers, pieces of code. And all of those pieces of code make up a whole jigsaw puzzle. That's why there is no separation inside these physical bodies. It seems what, like we're a little bit separate from the external, but we're not. Our environment and our bodies are the same. We're not muscles and bones and organs wrapped in a bag of skin and separate from everything else. We are the universe manifested into form. So make a choice, beautiful soul. Decide to understand your magic, your power, your alchemy. Dive into your heart and realize that you are a quantum architect, a Jedi, a wizard, a white witch. You have all of the, the firepower in every cell in your body. You can command the energy and the frequency of all of your multidimensional aspects. You can command the frequency of every celestial star, planet, sun and moon. And you can harness that energy right now. You are unstoppable. But you have to know this. There's no point me telling you. I might be here to remind you and get you to take a little journey inwards. But ultimately, you've got to do the work. You've got to take responsibility. No one's coming to save you. You've got to take that inner journey into the labyrinth of your own cosmic art and discover your own innate, magical, alchemical, wizard, witchery, architectural abilities, man. You're a grandmother dragon, a grandfather dragon. You're a unicorn. You're everything that is and everything that was and everything that will ever be and you're nothing. You choose. <laughs> it's a ride. I love you so much, beautiful soul. Wherever you are on this planet, go out and love your sisters and brothers fiercely and ferociously. Hug them tightly and never, ever, ever be the first to let go. That's the golden rule of hugging. Be fierce. Be love. Speak your truth. Live your truth. Don't give a fly and you know what. Make up the rules of your own human game and step into your own mastery and unite with your own sisters and brothers on this planet. Let's come together, let's form a tribe. We are a family. We are a family, galactic in nature, riding the wave and the vibrational stream of this human game. Remember to check out our website, starmagichealing.com. We got some of the best ascension tools on the planet. Hundreds of guided meditations, light language transmissions, light codes to activate your light body, your pineal gland, your kundalini. Switch on that right hemisphere. We've got high frequency nutrition, mystery school teachings on so many different subjects. 
We got telegram groups so you can connect with beautiful souls just like you on the same human mission. High frequency beings moving through this ascension process that want to make this world a much better place. That want to return earth to her former glory. To live from that frequency of love. We got cosmic yoga, all sorts. Go and check it out at starmagichealing.org and I'll see you on the inside, beautiful soul. We also meet every Monday and Wednesday. Monday's a frequency spa. Wednesday's a global meditation. They're part of your infinity membership. Go and get stuck in, check it out. You can get seven days free right now. Connect with your soul tribe and I'll see you again real soon. Remember to love, to laugh, to smile, to have fun and be like a child. Be like a child. I'll see you again real soon. One love, one heart, one human family. Peace out, beautiful soul.